for our last topic here, we're going to manipulate the confidence level and see how that affects the margin of error and width. And again, I put those together because they're very, very closely related, <laughs> right? So when one goes, the other one goes. All right, so let's see, what did I not change? If I look at these problems, they all have 50 and 100, 50 and 100, 50 and 100 for our table. Okay, reasonable enough. So that would mean that I have 0.5 here for every p hat. Remember the formula for p hat, p hat is x divided by n, that's p hat. And that's easy enough to see, right? 50 divided by 100 is 0.5, no problem. All right, so now I'm gonna come up with the confidence interval for P. Now, I was gonna write up here using technology. <laughs> I'll add that for future. Um, you can use either the calculator or StatCrunch either way. I'll show both as always. So on the calculator, even if you're using StatCrunch, I do like the little reminders of what I'm doing <laughs> because the little calculator phrases help us. So we're using a one prop Z int. That's what we'll be doing here. All right, so let me start you off with StatCrunch. So let me grab StatCrunch right here. And I'm going to go over here. I'm going to close this because we don't need to see this anymore. I'll make it a little bit bigger for right now. So stat, I'm going to click in here, stat, proportion stat, one sample. Now with data would mean I have a list, like yes, 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 no, no, yes, no, yes, no, right? I, I don't have that, right? So I can, that's not going to work. <laughs> so I have to choose with summary. So I'm going to click on with summary. So you're one sample and with summary. Now the number of successes is never changing for this problem. It's 50 for X and 100 for N. So that's set. What's going to change is my confidence level. Don't worry about the method, just leave it standard. That's the one we will be using. All right, so there are other ones in there, right? The Agresti Cool, but we're not gonna use that one. So leave it at 0.8 um, for your, excuse me, leave it at standard and then change this level to 0.8 for our first one. And I'm gonna click Compute. And there's the confidence interval right there. Now on the calculator, you would go to Stat, Calculate, or excuse me, Tests, one prop z int is actually closer to the bottom so if i hit the up arrow it'll take me to the bottom and kind of cycle through so i want letter a which is one prop z int and then i type 50 100 80 for my confidence level and click calculate and there you have it same answer same result all good all right so i'm going to go type those or write those numbers down so we have 0.43592 and then 0.56408. I'm just rounding to five decimal places just to be reasonable here. All right, now what about the error? The error, remember, is, well, actually, I'm going to write the formula for error, but we're not going to go find it right this second. It's the upper minus the lower, parentheses if you need to, divided by two. So that would be, I take it back. I am going to find it. It's 0 0.56408. Take away 0.43. That's a take away. That's a subtract. 43592 and divide it by 2. So let me grab the calculator. Or Desmos would work also, whichever one makes you happy. So parentheses 0 0.56408 minus 0 0.43592. Close your parentheses. Divide it by 2. And there you have it. 0 0.06408. And there we have it. All right, now to rerun it for the next one, you would go to stat, tests, one prop Z int, and you would change your confidence level to 90. Right? And then go down to calculate and press enter. So that is that's there on stat crunch, which I think is a little bit harder uh, to kind of remember what to do, but you go to stat proportion stat one sample with summary. And then your number of successes was 50. Your observations was a hundred. There was another way to get to here, but I'll 
I'm just going to change it this way. So 90 and click compute. The other way was to take the old result, click options and change to edit and just go in here and change your confidence level to whatever you want, which is what I'll do for the next one. So this is point four one seven seven six and then point five eight two two four and then I'm just gonna go do the next one right now edit and then the last one wants a 99% confidence so I'm gonna change this to 99 and click compute and of course you could do it in the calculator again you just rerun it but change your confidence level so point three seven one two one and then point six two eight seven nine. There we have it. Now I still need the calculator up because I need to be able to find that margin of error. I'm not going to show the formula every time. That's just silly. I am going to highlight the formula so I don't forget what it is. <laughs> but I'm not going to show the formula every time. So the next one would be parentheses. Oop, clear parentheses there we go 0.58224 minus 0.41776 close parentheses divided by 2 and then you could do it again 0.62879 minus 0.37121 hopefully you realize that last one the one I'm typing in right now is quite wide All right so this one has a margin of error 0.12 oh no this one is 0.12879 and the middle one is 0 0.08224. And of course, you could do those calculations on Dosmos if you don't have a TI-84. So what do we see happening? Right? What, what's the relationship we see going on here? So as we change those confidence levels, look at what happens to our error. It grows, right? So as our confidence level increases, right, as it increases, as it goes up, the margin of error, um, I'll put it here, margin of error also increases. And if margin of error goes, then the width also. Right, because they go hand in hand. They're very, very closely related. Right? So as our confidence level, as our C level goes up, the error also goes up. So that means they're directly related. That means if I made confidence level go down, if I went backwards, started off here and went backwards, then they would go down, which means there, there's a direct relationship. So if confidence level goes up, error goes up. Or if confidence level goes down, error goes down. It's called the direct relationship. As opposed to an inverse relationship, which we saw on the previous page. So a direct relationship. If one goes up, the other goes up. One goes down, the other goes down. And if error goes up, by the way, width goes up also. And width would go down here. Right? Because width, width is error's buddy. Now, why is this happening? Well, this is a little trickier to see. Your confidence level, right? And these are the confidence interval formulas, that's CI. So consider the confidence interval formulas for the mean and proportion. So look at these two. Why does this make sense? Well, your confidence level affects what in these formulas? It affects the T alpha over two and the Z alpha over two. So if your confidence level is increases, what does that mean? That would mean that your alpha decreases. And if your alpha decreases, then what happens to your Z alpha over to your T alpha over to? They increase.
and that is in the numerator. Right? It's out in front. So it's in the numerator. So when it increases, it causes everything to increase. Now let me give you an example. We went from, oh, I don't know, 0 0.80 to 0.99. So let's consider those two sea levels. So sea level 0 0.80, sea level 0 0.99. What happens? Well, this one has an alpha of 0.20. This one has an alpha of 0.01, right? And if you look at the formulas, they involve alpha over two, so I might as well figure that out right, right off the bat. Alpha over two here is 0 0.10. Alpha over two here is 0 0.005. So now, to quickly show this to you, I mean, you could use inverse norm or inverse T, either one, but it's fastest just in the table. Let's look at alpha over 2 equals 0 0.10. Just right at the top, let's look at that. That's 3.078. Now let's look at 0 0.005, right? So right there is 80%, right there is 99%. And then any degree of freedom you like, there's 80%, there's 99%. There's 80%, there's 99%. Look at the numbers. This one's always larger. So do you see what I mean? The T alpha over twos are larger than the Z alpha over twos. And if you go to the very bottom, which is the Z scores right here, this is the 80% column. Trust me, that's the 1.10 there. And then the 0 0.005 is right here. Look at those two numbers. 0 0.005 is bigger. Right? The Z score is larger if the confidence level is larger. As a matter of fact, your confidence level grows as you move along this table. Because over here, you have a low confidence level. Right? Your confidence level is only 50%. Then your confidence level is 60%, 70%, 80%, 90%, 95%, 90%, and so on. 95, 96, 98. Right? So, because these are alpha over twos. So, as I move to the right along this table, my confidence level is growing. Look at my numbers. If you move on any row, it's growing. That's what's happening here. So the confidence level increases, causes those alphas to decrease, which means the T or the Z would increase. And f you can see that if you look at, I mean, I'm just going to pick Z alpha over 2. The Z alpha over 2 was 1.282 for this one, and it was, let me look down at the table, 2.576 for this one. This is Z alpha over 2. For 80%, this is Z alpha over 2 for 99%, right? It's growing, right? It causes it to be a larger number. And it's in the numerator, so when it's multiplied by all of this, it's going to mean the overall thing is, right? So error, because remember, all of this back half is the error. So when I grow that number out in front right here, it's going to make the overall error small or larger. So error is larger. And that's because it was in the numerator. Now there's one more piece that we're not going to do an example for, but I think you guys can figure out how it works. And it's the standard deviation. If you look at the formula for the mean, or excuse me, formula for the confidence interval for a mean, right? Look at x bar plus or minus t alpha over 2 times s over the square root of n, right? The standard deviation is right there. So what does that mean? If it increases, oh, and remember, this whole back half is the error. Right? Since standard deviation is in the numerator, if the standard deviation increases, right, goes up, what will happen to the error? Well, it's in the numerator, so it will also go up. It's another direct relationship. As a matter of fact, all of these had direct relationships except for n. <laughs> Did you notice? Right? So it's because of at the t and the s are both in the numerator. So when confidence level increases, it causes the error to increase. When standard deviation increases, it causes the error to increase. The one that's different is n because it's in the denominator. That's why there was an inverse relationship for n, but a direct relationship for everything else. By the way, same token, if the standard deviation decreases, then that would mean that the error decreases, goes down. Right. Again, that's what a direct relationship would mean here. Right. There's a direct relationship between your standard deviation and your error.
which means, of course, just as with confidence or, or confidence level, they go hand in hand. Confidence level goes up, error goes up. Standard deviation goes up, error goes up, right? Or, or it can be backwards, right? And you can make them go down. But either way, um, that's what a direct relationship looks like.